Hey guys, my name is Dini and welcome to my channel. So you've probably heard of Forex trading and you want to learn how to trade and what trading is. And so today's episode, I'm going to be giving you guys a no bullshit introduction to Forex. So without any further ado, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed and let's get on with it. Real quick before we start this video, I just want to let you guys all know our long awaited Forex Mastery course is coming out very soon. The reason why I'm doing this course is because I remember when I first started trading, I wanted to learn real information without any BS that can teach me the basics plus the strategies to trade with. Which is why I dedicated myself to creating a solid course that is packed with good information to take you from a beginner stage to being able to analyze the charts and take trades for yourself. In fact, this video is part of our course and I decided to give it away for free. So yeah, just be on the lookout for the Forex Mastery course coming very soon. So what is Forex? Forex basically stands for Foreign Exchange and is simply exchanging one currency for another. If you've ever traveled to another country, you usually had to look for some sort of an exchange booth to exchange the money you have in your wallet into the currency of the country you're visiting. For example, I recently traveled to Bali and I had to exchange my five pounds into a hundred thousand Indonesian rupiah. Okay, so this is what trading is. You're exchanging one currency for another. That's all it is. The foreign exchange market, which is also known as Forex or FX, is the largest financial market in the world. The largest stock market in the world, which is the New York Stock Exchange, has a volume, a trading volume of 22.4 billion a day. And in the Forex market, the trading volume each day is five trillion. So yeah, you can see how Forex is the largest financial market in the world. Now you know what Forex is and now you might be wondering what is trading in Forex? Is it crypto, oil and gas, gold? What exactly are we trading? And the answer to that is we are buying and selling currencies. So you're trading currencies and nothing else. So you're basically buying and selling currencies only. You have to know when trading Forex, you can't buy or sell with just one currency. For example, you can't just buy a pound by itself. You would have to trade with another currency, for example, pound USD, okay? And that's called a currency pair. When you're trading in Forex, you can't just buy or sell one currency. So you can't just be like, I'm going to sell USD. No, you can't. You would have to pair it with another currency and you would trade with what we call a currency pair. Now, what is a currency pair? A currency pair is the quotation of two different currencies with the value of one currency being quoted against the other. The first listed currency of a currency pair is called the base currency and the second currency is called the quote currency. Now, what exactly is a base currency? The base currency is the first currency in any currency pair. The currency quote shows how much the base currency is worth as measured against the second currency. For example, if USD Swiss rate equals 1.6350, then one USD is worth 1.63 in Swiss francs. Now, what is a quote currency? The quote currency is the second currency in any currency pair. So it's very simple. The first currency in any currency pair is called the base currency and the second currency is called the quote currency. So if we have USD JPY, the base currency is USD, the quote currency is JPY. Let's say we have pound JPY, the base currency would be pound the quote currency would be JPY, Japanese Yen. Unlike the New York Stock Exchange or the London Stock Exchange, the Forex market has neither a physical location nor a central exchange. The entire Forex market is run electronically within a network of banks, 
continuously over a 24 hour period. Trades can take place anywhere as long as you have an internet connection. When can you take trades? Well, the market is open five days a week, 24 hours a day. So Monday to Friday, it's open and Saturday to Sunday, it's closed. Now let's talk about the seven most actively traded currencies. Number one, we have the US dollar, USD. Number two, we have Euro. Number three, we have Japanese Yen, JPY. Number four, we have Pound Sterling. Number five, we have the Australian dollar, AUD. Number six, we have the Canadian dollar, CAD. Number seven, we have Swiss franc, CHF. Now, as you can see, the dollar is king in the Forex market, and that's because the dollar is the most traded currency, taking up about 84.9% of all transactions. Now, why is the dollar so powerful? Well, number one, the United States economy is the largest economy in the world. Number two, the US dollar is the reserve currency of the world. Number three, the United States has the largest and most liquid financial markets in the world. Number four, the United States has a stable political system. Now, moving on, how do you make money trading Forex? The objective of trading is to exchange one currency for another in the expectation that the price will change. An exchange rate is simply the ratio of one currency valued against another currency. Now, how do you read a Forex quote? Currencies are always quoted in pairs such as pound USD or USD JPY. The reason they are quoted in pairs is because in every foreign exchange transaction, you are simultaneously buying one currency and selling another. Here's an example of a foreign exchange rate for the British pound versus the US dollar. The first listed currency to the left of the slash is known as the base currency, in this example the British pound, whilst the second one on the right is called the quote currency, in this example the US dollar. When buying, the exchange rate tells you how much you have to pay in units of the quote currency to buy one unit of the base currency. So in the example above, you have to pay 1.51258 US dollars to buy one British pound. When selling, the exchange rate tells you how many units of the quote currency you get for selling one unit of the base currency. In the example above, you will receive 1.51258 US dollars when you sell one British pound. Okay, so we have Euro USD here, and let's say you wish to take a buy on Euro USD. Well, simply what that means is that you are buying the base currency while simultaneously selling the quote currency. So, in simpler words, you're buying Euro whilst also selling the dollar. You would buy the pair if you believe the base currency will appreciate, gain value relative to the quote currency or you would sell the pair if you think the base currency will depreciate or lose value relative to the court currency. So in simpler terms, let's say you wish to place a buy for Euro USD. Well, you're hoping Euro strengthens and the dollar weakens. So you're hoping Euro goes up and USD goes down. And if you're selling, you're hoping Euro goes down and USD goes up. Now let's talk about the definition of long, short, bullish and bearish. You will always hear traders saying they are going long or going short and simply what that is is this. When you buy, you are going long and when you sell, you are going short. So long equals buy and short equals sell. Now what exactly is bullish and bearish? Bullish basically means that you believe a currency pair will go up. So you believe it's bullish, it's on a bull run, it's going to go up. Bearish on the other hand means that you believe that the currency pair will go down, meaning you will sell. So bullish means up, bearish means down. Now let's move on to the bid, ask and spread. All Forex quotes are quoted with two prices, the bid and ask. In general, the bid is lower than the ask price. The bid is the price at which your broker is willing to buy the base currency in exchange for the quote currency. This means the bid is the best available price at which you, the trader, will sell to the market. 
if you want to sell something, the broker will buy it from you at the bid price. The ask is the price at which your broker will sell the base currency in exchange for the quote currency. This means the ask price is the best available price at which you will buy from the market. If you want to buy something, the broker will sell or offer it to you at the ask price. The difference between the bid and ask price is known as the spread. On the Euro USD quote above, the bid price is 1.34568 and the ask price is 1.34588. If you want to sell euro, you click sell and you'll sell euros at 1.34568. If you want to buy euro, you will click buy and you'll buy euros at 1.34588. So as you can see, the difference between the bid and the ask is only two pips because the bid is at 1.34568 and the ask is at 1.34588 so 58 minus 56 is two pips so two pip spread that's how you calculate your spreads now how do you know when to buy or sell well there are two ways to analyze the charts technical analysis or fundamental analysis you can analyze the charts and determine when to buy or sell using technical analysis or fundamental analysis. Let's start off with fundamental analysis. Each currency belongs to a country or region. So Forex fundamental analysis focuses on the overall state of the country's economy, such as productivity, employment, manufacturing, international trade, and interest rates. Euro USD. In this example, the euro is the base currency and thus the basis for the buy or sell. If you believe that the US economy will continue to weaken, which is bad for the US dollar, you would execute a buy euro USD order. By doing so, you have bought euros in the expectation that they will rise versus the US dollar. If you believe that the US economy is strong and the euro will weaken against the US dollar, you would execute a sell euro USD order. By doing so, you have sold euros in the expectation that they will fall versus the US dollar. Pound USD. In this example, the pound is the base currency and thus the basis for the buy or sell. If you think the British economy will continue to do better than the US in terms of economic growth, you would execute a buy pound USD order. By doing so, you have bought pounds in the expectation that they will rise versus the US dollar. If you believe the British economy is slowing down while the American economy remains strong, you would execute a sell pound USD order. By doing so, you have sold pound in the expectation that they will depreciate against the US dollar. So to simplify everything, whenever you take a buy trade, you're hoping the base currency, which in this example is pound, goes up and the quote currency goes down. If this was pound JPY, you're expecting pound to strengthen and yen to fall down. So when you're buying, you're hoping the first currency on the left to strengthen and the second currency on the right to weaken. As Forex traders, we rely on news sites to update and notify us of when events will occur, such as when President Trump does his speeches. Knowing the dates of key events will help you avoid trading during those volatile moments or will help keep you aware so you know what to expect. One very useful site I use is forexfactory.com. With forexfactory.com, you get notified during key events so you know the times of when every event is going to happen during the day. So it gives you the exact time um, and the pair is going to affect and the impact level. It also lets you know when news event articles come out. So yeah, it's very useful to use. Make sure you check it out, forexfactory.com. Events on forexfactory.com are categorized as four potential impacts. We have the red, which is high impact. So for example, when President Trump speaks, when you know a major event happens like the non-farm payroll, NFP, which happens on the first Friday of every month, then it's going to be under a high impact 
category. Next up, we have medium impact. So not as much as an impact as the high impact. Um, and we also have low impact. Um, don't expect much volatility during those low impacts. However, anything can happen, so just be aware. And last but not least, we have a non-economic impact. So this basically is something that you don't have to worry about. When you see this on forexfactory.com, um, it basically means it's not going to have a major impact on the market. So yeah, that's the four potential impacts listed on forexfactory.com. Now that you know fundamental analysis, let's talk about technical analysis. Technical analysis is the framework in which forex traders study price movement. The theory is that a person can look at historical price movements and determine the current trading conditions and potential price movement. The main evidence for using technical analysis is that theoretically all current market information is reflected in price. Now, have you ever heard of the old saying, history tends to repeat itself? Well, that's basically what technical analysis is all about. Technical analysts look for similar patterns that have formed in the past and will form trade ideas, believing that price will act the same way that it did before. Technical analysts use charts because they are the easiest ways to visualize historical data. You can look at past data to help you spot trends and patterns, which could help you find some great trading opportunities. So yeah, simply what technical analysis is, is that you're looking at the past to determine the future. When you see patterns like this, you go back in time, you recognize it and you form an idea and a plan to capitalize off of that past data. So you're looking at the past to predict the future. Now there's three types of Forex charts, a line chart, a bar chart, and a candlestick chart. Let's start off by explaining what a line chart is. A simple line chart draws a line from one closing price to the next closing price. When strung together with a line, we can see the general price movement of a currency pair over a period of time. Here's an example of a line chart. So yeah, this is what it looks like. It's just an up and down movement and it's just made up of lines. Next up, we have a bar chart. A bar chart is a little more complex. It shows the opening and closing prices as well as the highs and lows. The bottom of the vertical bar indicates the lowest traded price for that time period, whilst the top of the bar indicates the highest price paid. The vertical bar itself indicates the currency pair's trading range as a whole. The horizontal hash on the left side of the bar is the opening price and the right side horizontal hash is the closing price. Bar charts are also called OHLC charts because they indicate the open, the high, the low and the close for that particular currency. Here's an example of a bar chart. So as you can see exactly what we were talking about, OHLC, the open, the high, the low and the close. The horizontal hash on the left side of the bar is the opening and the right side horizontal hash is the closing price. I personally don't really use a bar chart or a line chart. What I actually use is a candlestick chart. Candlestick charts show the same price information as a bar chart, but in a prettier graphic format. Candlestick bars still indicate the high to low range with a vertical line. However, in candlestick charting, the larger block or body in the middle indicates the range between the opening and closing prices. A candlestick consists of two things, the body and the wick. The body is the center block and shows the open and close. The wicks show the low and high. Candlesticks are easy to interpret and is an easy place for beginners to start figuring out forex chart analysis. Here is an example of a candlestick chart. So as you can see, we have two types of candlesticks, the bullish candlestick 
and the bearish candlestick. Let's start with the bullish candlestick. With the bullish candlestick, the only difference is that the open is at the bottom of the body and the close is at the top of the body. The body is the middle block right here. The wicks are the lines on the top and the bottom. So whether it's a bullish candlestick or a bearish candlesticks, the low and high will remain the same. So the low for the bullish candlestick is always at the bottom and the low for the bearish candlestick is always at the bottom and the highs are always at the top with the top of the wick. So the difference between the bullish candlestick and a bearish candlestick is that the bearish candlestick has a open at the top and the close at the bottom. So you know how the bullish opens from the bottom and closes at the top? The bearish candlestick opens at the top and closes at the bottom because a bullish candlestick is a candlestick that is going up. So when it's going up, it starts from the bottom. So the bottom is the open and it goes up and closes at the top. However, on a bearish candlestick, since it's going down and it's a downward candlestick, it starts from the top and closes at the bottom. Okay, so now let's talk about a pip. What is a pip? The unit of measurement to express the change in value between two currencies is called a pip. For example, if EURUSD moves from 1.1050 to 1.1051, that 0 0.001 USD rise in value is one pip. A pip is usually the last decimal place of a price quote. Most pairs go out to four decimal places, but there are some exceptions like the Japanese yen pairs. They go out to two decimal places. Now, what is a pipette? There are forex brokers that quote currency pairs beyond the standard four and two decimal places to five and three decimal places. They are quoting fractional pips also called pipettes. For instance, if pound USD moves from 1.30542 to 1.30543, that point quadruple zero one USD move higher is one pipette. Now, how do you easily identify a pip or pipette? Well, that's very simple. Let's start off with Euro USD. So, Let's say we have 1.11110. Now, the pip will always be the fourth digit after the point. The last digit will always be the pipette with most brokers. So with most brokers, they actually show five digits for most pairs except for yen pairs. So if you see five digits, then just know the last digit is always a pipette and not a pip. The fourth digit is a pip. So yeah, to easily identify the pip, just look for the fourth digit after the point for non-yen pairs. So now moving on to yen pairs, to identify a pip on yen pairs, you would just need to go to the second digit after the point. So in this example, we have the second digit here, which is zero, that's the pip. And the last digit is always going to be the pipette. Okay, so now that we know what a pip and pipette is, how do we know the value of a pip? And the answer to that is very simple. The value of a pip is determined by the lot size you use. For example, if I made a profit of 10 pips and used a lot size of 1.00, that means I made $100 on that trade based on my lot size. However, if someone made the same amount of pips as me, so 10 pips, they could have made more or less depending on the lot size they used. If someone used 10 lots, which is 10.00, and made the same amount of pips, which is 10 pips, they profit $1,000 from that same trade. Now, what exactly is a lot size? The number of currency units you buy or sell is called a lot size. There are standard lots, mini lots, micro lots, and nano lots. So when we're looking at the units, 
think of it as how many shares you're buying. It's sort of like saying I'm going to buy a hundred shares on a Facebook stock, right? So units basically indicate how many shares you're buying or selling. So for example, on a standard lot, that is a hundred thousand units. The volume on that 100,000 is 1.00 and the value of that 1.00 volume is $10 a pip. So for each pip that you make with a standard lot, you would make $10. So if you make 10 pips, that's a hundred dollars. Now you can have more than 1.00 depending on the capital that you have. You can make it 20. 0 .00, which means $200 a pip. You can make it 100.00, which means $1,000 a pip. The choice is yours. So yeah, we have a standard lot and we also have a mini lot. A mini lot has a unit of 10,000 and the volume is 0.10. The value of a mini lot, a 0.10 value would mean $1 a pip. So for every pip you make, you would make a dollar. So for example, if you make 10 pips, you've made $10. We also have a micro lot. A micro lot has a thousand units and the volume for that is 0 0.01. So let's say we have 0 0.01 on a trade. That means you would make 0.10, so 10 cents a pip. So if you make 10 pips, you would make a dollar. Last but not least, we have a nano lot and a nano lot has a unit of a hundred. The volume for that is 0 0.001 and the value is 0 0.01 pip. So one cent a pip. So if you make 10 pips with a nano lot, you're basically making 10 cents. And also remember that the value of a pip is always calculated in dollars, not any other currency except for dollars. Regardless of what account currency you have with your broker, the pip value will always be calculated in dollars. Okay, so now moving on, what is leverage? Leverage is the ratio of the amount of capital used in a transaction to the required security deposit margin. It is the ability to control large dollar amounts of a security with a relatively small amount of capital. Leveraging varies dramatically with different brokers ranging from 1 to 1 to 500 to 1. For example, if you use a leverage of 1 to 300 and you had a capital of $1, you could take a trade worth $300 but however remember it's a double-edged sword and yes it basically allows you to invest more than what you have in your account. I personally suggest a maximum leverage of 1 to 300. Major and minor currencies. The 8 most frequently traded currencies. USD, Euro, Yen, Pound, Swiss Franc, Canadian Dollar, New Zealand Dollar and Australian dollar are all called the major currencies or the majors. All other currencies are referred to as minor currencies. Now let's talk about margin. What is margin? When you open a new margin account with a forex broker, you must deposit a minimum amount with that broker. The minimum and maximum varies from broker to broker and can be as low as $100 to as high as $100,000 and more. Each time you execute a new trade, a certain percentage of the account balance in the margin account will be set aside as the initial margin requirement for the new trade. The amount is based upon the underlying currency pair, its current price, and the number of units or lots traded. So margin is basically the amount of money that a trader needs to put forward in order to open a trade. When trading forex on margin, you only need to pay a percentage of the full value of the position to open a trade. Now let's talk about order types. When you wish to place a trade, whether it's a buy or sell, you have the option of having three different types of orders. Number one, a market order. Number two, a limit order. And number three, a stop order. Let's start off with market order. A market order is an order to buy or sell at the best available price. For example, 
The bid price for EURUSD is currently at 1.2140 and the ask price is at 1.2142. If you wanted to buy EURUSD at market then it would be sold to you at the price of 1.2142. You would click buy and your trading platform would instantly execute a buy order at that exact price. Price. If you've ever shopped on Amazon.com, it's kind of like using the one click ordering system. You like the current price, you click once and it's yours. Please keep in mind that depending on market conditions, there may be a difference between the price you selected and the final price that is executed on your trading platform. So yeah, to summarize, a market order is basically instant. It happens straight away. It's right there and then. So when you click buy, you've bought straight away. When you've clicked sold, you've sold straight away. Limit order. A limit order is an order placed to either buy below the market or sell above the market at a certain price. For example, your USD is currently trading at 1.2050. Let's say you want to go short if the price reaches 1.2070. You can either sit in front of your monitor and wait for it to hit 1.2070 at which point you would click a sell market order or you can set a sell limit order at 1.2070 then you could walk away from your computer to work out at the gym. If the price goes up to 1.2070, your trading platform will automatically execute a sell order at the best available price. You use this type of entry order when you believe price will reverse upon hitting the price you specified. A limit order to buy at a price below the current market price will be executed at a price equal to or less than the specified price. A limit order to sell at a price above the current market price will be executed at a price equal to or more than the specified price. So to summarize, a buy limit is an order placed below price and price then goes up. So let's say price is right here this blue circle, then you are looking to buy when price goes down. Well, when it's there, you set an order below the market price to then buy it for you even when you're away from the computer. So you set that price and when you're away from the computer, it will automatically enter a buy position at the specified price. A sell limit is an order placed above price and then price then goes down. So let's say price is right here. You wish to sell when price goes up. You can tell your trading platform the exact price you wish to sell. And so when you're away from the computer, it will automatically sell for you at the specified price. So yeah, it's very useful when you're busy and you don't want to spend too much time on the PC. Last but not least, we have a stop order. A stop order is an order placed to buy above the market or sell below the market at a certain price. For example, pound USD is currently trading at 1.5050 and is heading upward. You believe that price will continue in this direction if it hits 1.5060. You can do one of the following to play this belief. Sit in front of your computer and buy at market when it hits 1.5060 or set a stop entry order at 1.5060. So to simplify, a buy stop is an order placed above price and price keeps going up. So let's say price is at this blue circle. You wish to buy when price goes up just a little because you have a belief that the price will go up even more. Well, you can tell your trading platform the exact price in which you want to enter at and it will enter at that specified price. And a sell stop is an order placed below price and price keeps going down. So let's say price is at this blue circle. You wish to sell at this red zone right here. You would tell your trading platform the exact price you want to sell at. And even when you're away from your computer, the trading platform will enter a sell position for you at that specified price. Forex trading sessions. Now that you know what Forex is, it's time to learn when you can trade in the Forex markets. Yes, the market is open 24 hours a day 
and five days a week. But it doesn't mean the market is always active, right? There are certain times when the market is slow and there's not much volatility. And you need to learn when to avoid those times so you can trade when there's good amounts of volatility. You can make money in the forex markets when the market goes up or even when the market goes down, but you will have a hard time trading if the market has no volatility at all. Forex market hours. Now there are four major trading sessions each day. The Sydney session, London session, New York session and Tokyo session. So the market is open 24 hours a day, five days a week. But in each 24 hours, there are four major trading sessions. Starting off at 9 p.m., we have the Sydney session. The Sydney session starts from 9 p.m. all the way until 5 a.m. GMT time. In between 11 p.m. at night, to about seven in the morning is the Tokyo session. So as you can see, it overlaps with the Sydney session. So 11 p.m. at night to 7 a.m. in the morning is the Tokyo session. Then at 7 a.m. all the way to 3 p.m. is the London session. This is the most volatile trading session. And at 7 a.m it also overlaps with the Tokyo session. Last but not least, we have the New York session. It starts at 12 p.m. afternoon time all the way until 8 p.m. in the evening. Also, just to let you know, these times can vary. So just to have a more accurate timing, I would suggest you go to forex.com timezoneconverter.com because I'm using the GMT time. So if you want to convert to your time zone and your local time, go on this website and find out the exact time. Now let's talk about the average pip movement during each trading session. From the picture, you will see that the London session normally provides the most movement. Okay, now let's talk about the best times to trade Forex. London, New York overlap. This is the best time of day as traders from the two largest financial centers, London and New York trade. It is during this period where we can see some big moves, especially when news reports from the US and Canada are released. The middle of the week typically shows the most movement as the pip range widens for most of the major currency pairs. So as you can see, between 12 p.m. and 3 p.m., we have two major trading sessions. So what does that mean? Well, basically, you will experience high volatility during this time. Now, what are the worst times to trade Forex? Number one, on Sundays. Everyone is sleeping or enjoying the weekend. So stop trading when the market opens on a Sunday night. Number two, on Fridays. Liquidities die down during the latter part of the US session. So if you're going to trade on a Friday, at least do so before 3 p.m. What I've noticed is that after 3 p.m. GMT time, the market slows down. So you don't want to have to trade on a slow day. And just remember what you couldn't do on four days cannot be done in one day. Number three, during holidays. Everybody's taking a break and you should too. So don't be trading during a holiday. Last but not least, during a major news event, you don't want to get whipsawed. Trust me, do not trade during a major news event. No matter how experienced you are, stay away, wait for the news to pass and then trade. Okay, so now that you know the basics, I recommend setting up a broker account and not to trade live, but to set up a demo account. So as you learn more and more, you can get familiar with the charts and when you're ready to go live, you can go live. Now let's talk about what a Forex broker is. Forex brokers are firms that provide traders with access to a platform so that they can buy or sell currencies. There are many forex brokers out there and you just have to find the one that suits you. However, I personally use IC Markets. It's a very good broker. It has an Islamic account as well. And yeah, I've never had issues with IC Markets. And just to let you know, we have partnered up with BD Swiss to give you guys a three day 
online forex webinar this is my webinar i'm going to teach you from a to z how to go from a beginner stage to being able to analyze break down the charts and being able to take trades for yourself this is a no bs webinar i've seen so many webinars that just talk and talk and not give real useful information so i'm tired of that and I've decided to partner up with BD Swiss to give you guys a three day online Forex bootcamp. So yeah, I'm hosting that webinar next month. So make sure you follow the details in the description below to secure your position. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned what trading is, how you can trade and how you can get started. So yeah, make sure you hit the like button in this video, subscribe, Comment down below videos you want me to make and I'll see you on my next video.